This tutorial is going to be on using colored pencils. I'm using Prang brand. They're not as soft as um, Prismacolor, but they're very good colored pencils. Uh, you can blend with them. If you use something harder like a Crayola, the pencil's more durable, but they're not very good for blending. So when you get a Usually, the more expensive a colored pencil is, uh, the less durable it is, but the better you can blend with it. So, this is a design that's sort of based on a topographic map, and it's also a fractal type design. I'm just going to start with a little branching structure here. Now the trick on this one is, every time you put a new color down, you go around with a new color. Colored pencils have got a pretty fine point, so it takes a long time to do something like this with colored pencils. If you do it with markers, it goes a lot faster because the tips are much broader. Now the next step on this is to extend it. And add some new branches. Once you've done that, maybe I'll make a second branch on this one. And maybe a second branch on that one. Once you're done with that, then you get your next color. extend these add a couple more little branches Now before I forget, I'm going to go back in here and add something. I've never done this before on one of these, but we'll try and see what it looks like. If you were actually thinking of this as being a real topographic map, which is what it'll end up looking like, there could be areas where they were like little lakes. Okay, now the next color.
gonna put a few little tiny creases on the edges of some of these because at this point I'm gonna switch colors and it's gonna be more like that that's water and it's gonna start changing more to light land colors I'm changing the nature of the branching a little bit. Making them a little more blunt shape. Because I want the branches to start running into each other now. Now at this point, getting into a place where branches are running into each other and it's creating little cells. And when you encounter one of those cells that's been closed off from the rest, like this one right here, or this one, you just go around it. You don't want to fill it in. see from the last layer the branching is creating lots of cells and there's a lot of branches at this point it takes a long time to make a trace all the way around the edge because of all the branches and all the cells that have to be gone around so this particular drawing enters into a phase that takes a lot of patience. <clears throat> okay. The next layer after this one should take probably the longest to go around because after I put these branches in and I've created all these little cells. It'll take a while to go around all those edges. As you can see, it's going to take a long time to go around this layer because the perimeter length is so long because of all the branches and the little cells. But some of the cells are going to start getting filled in this time. Okay, finish tracing this layer. very long perimeter. The next layer probably will get shorter because I will branch it. Which will create lots of little cells. And at some point I will just color the little cells in rather than drawing around. Okay, now I'm going to trace and branch one last layer, and then the last layer, I'll fill all the cells in. It takes a long time in this middle part of the picture to 
finish it. Sometimes it seems like it's taking forever because you have to trace around so many points and so many, such a long perimeter around the edge. Because at least for part of the picture, every time you add a point, it makes the perimeter just that much longer and each point adds up like each point has twice the distance of just the point because you have to go around it and usually when you add a branch you add two Okay, you'll see as I branch this layer, there's very little room left. Most everything will be broken into cells by this layer. The decision here is whether to fill in the cells or to go around with one more perimeter and I think in this case I'm gonna go ahead and fill the cells in and it's a matter of choosing a color um, I believe I'll go back to the turquoise color for this layer maybe I won't fill the cells in completely So, as I'm finishing these cells, I'm thinking about what I want to do to the last color, and I think what I'm going to do is throw in something that's across the color wheel, so it gives it a sort of an added uh, surprise at the end. This may make it look better. It may make it look worse. But you always gotta try. Once you have this many colors in a complex pattern like this, sometimes it's hard to predict what the outcome of adding one last color like this is gonna do. Especially if the color isn't following the pattern. Now, as I fill in these cells, the fact that I used a color across the color wheel from the green, it completely changes the nature of the picture. And actually, so now more than looking like a topographic map, maybe it looks like some sort of a piece of artwork or foliage with some kind of flowers or berries in it, an abstraction of that sort of thing. Alright, so... give it a little closer shot so you can see what it looked like when it's finished. There it is. 